Today, we're going to take a look at fan service in Mortal Kombat. One of the biggest and most popular action franchises of all time is Mortal Kombat, which started as a lowly fighting game in 1992, which was wildly popular. It was published by the company Midway after they failed to push through a Jean-Claude Van Damme inspired fighting game. That could have been awkward. No, who wants to go home and who wants to go with me? It naturally became a fan hit. And by 1994, just two years after its release, they'd already sold six million copies. And by 2007, they'd sold 26 million copies. Where money is, Hollywood follows. And so a slew of Mortal Kombat movies have been made. As such, with the release of the rebranded, refranchised, redone, renewed Mortal Kombat 2021. Fight! No Harry Potter shit, all right? Who's that? No. So, what is fan service? Well, you've probably all seen it, and maybe sometimes you will have heard someone said, Oh, did you see that little bit at the back there and the thing in the duck? And, the, and, and, and when he twisted, it was actually meant to be, it was a kind of a callback to this thing that they did with the... Shut up and pass me a fucking intro! In the Mortal Kombat franchise, the movies initially started by using characters that we recognized from the game, doing moves that we recognized from the game. However, the latest Mortal Kombat diverges from the original films in two key ways. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> Sorry. First of all, what Mortal Kombat is best known for is its gratuitous gore and violence, especially when at the end of a fighting bout, you are told to finish the other player. Finish him. These finishing moves would be accompanied by a commentator's voice, and depending on how you finish them and how you even played your match, you would get a different type of ending. Fatality. Shao Kahn wins flawless victory. These endings really glorified your victories and really kind of made it hard to lose and, and increased the competitive nature of the game, which is why it's still an incredibly popular game now. My sincere apologies. Won't happen again, I promise you. However, unlike the original games and movies, in the latest film, these lines that the commentator would speak in a rather omniscient way, as if they were watching your performance, are now being said by the characters themselves. Flawless victory. Although they are still speaking to the fans using these lines, which are motivated by their actions in the film, it does feel as if it's slightly ham-fisted into the film. There's not really a reason why they would say flawless victory. But for now, they've got the characters saying these lines, and I really wish that they tried to either find a more motivated way of saying it, or left it out altogether, because there's already so much fan service happening. <laughs> Kano wins. Kano wins. On the other side of that argument, I can't deny that maybe part of me kind of enjoys a hammy line or two every once in a while. Just not all the time. I smell something. Bullshit. The second way that the latest Mortal Kombat movie diverges from the original movies is through the use of its protagonist. In the first movies, the protagonist was Liu Kang someone who everyone was trying to help and power up throughout the movies as the savior, the main fighter who was going to win the day for everyone. If you won't fight with all of your heart, there is no hope. In the latest movie, however, we have a completely new character, someone who we don't know and we've never seen in any of the games or movies before this point. There are two ways to look at this. 
One, this is a really, really interesting thing to do. It essentially turns the character into a fish out of water character, enabling the movie to regurgitate all of the rules and systems that it needs to tell a brand new audience who have no idea about Mortal Kombat exactly what it's all about. So in that way, his function is to allow for exposition to be motivated, although a couple of moments of exposition may be Maybe, maybe a little bit too much. That dragon marking? It signifies that you've been chosen to fight for Earth. It's an invitation to fight for something known as Mortal Kombat. This also means that, well, the audience don't really know who they're watching. They're expecting to see a whole bunch of characters that they recognize from the games and they know their backstories and they know their moves and they know what they say. However, now the movie has to spend a considerable amount of time with this brand new character, letting us get to know him, his life and what he needs, what his morals are and why we should actually care about, well, him winning or losing. You just made this? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Tell me to put it on. Ah, man. Now we got one each. When looking at the original game, every single character in there is a specialist, is an incredibly powerful fighter. But when we meet our new character, he keeps getting his ass kicked. Even pretty much the only time he wins in the film is because he gets help from someone else, be it his wife or be it his ancestor. Spoiler alert, sorry. Get over here! I mean, at least give us some confidence in the fella. I'm guessing he's gonna be back in the next movie. Ultimately, I think the latest Mortal Kombat movie is a really fun romp and it really does pay homage to the fans of the Mortal Kombat films. And I think they do something for the first time, which is they finally got the gore and violence of the Mortal Kombat games actually right. This really does help tie the movies to the games in a way that without fan service, you just couldn't do.